G'day everyone, welcome to x Recite. I'm Chrissy. thanks for joining me. Well I've been getting quite a few questions about uh, what I do to set up or behind the scenes set up on my live streaming or my videoing um, software and all of the things that happen that you don't usually see. So I thought I'd put together just a, a very small video um, about all of those things. So here we go. I've been painting and drawing for about I'd say about eight years, eight years um, lately recently but I used to paint and draw when I was a little girl. Uh, I did a lot of colouring, uh, colour pencil uh, work when I was a little girl and I progressed into, when I progressed into high school I started and I, well I took up art um, and um, I worked with oils and I did that for quite a few years which I enjoyed and unfortunately I didn't continue with it uh, life got in the way so I picked I picked it up in my later years and now I haven't looked look back since so I'm actually quite um, uh, quite enjoying myself well when I decided to get back into painting and drawing um, I needed a place to you know to do my artwork and uh, I had a, this little um, desk underneath um, our staircase near the uh, in our living room and that's where I was for a very long time it was like about a three by three foot uh, little cube cube place little spot perfect um, I had um, my uh, some storage for my art uh, just behind me just enough room for a desk a seat and um, a little bit of art storage and it was perfect and I was there for about a couple of years for sure for sure uh, maybe even more uh, and then um, what happened my easels and my artwork started to migrate well into the lounge room and uh, my husband goes mm, Chrissy I think we need to give you a little bit more space so um, he gave me uh, half of his shed which was cool uh, yes no it was very very nice and I'm very very grateful so that's how I first that's well that's how I started I store my art supplies mainly in um, toolboxes now that how that came to be I was um, having a look at my husband in his shed and when he was you know using his toolboxes and and I thought and I was opening and closing his drawers and I go you know what that's very that's a very good place to store art supplies think about it the drawers are nice and shallow right and quite sturdy and strong and uh, it was just perfect so I put all my pencils my uh, my paints my brushes oh terrific and now I've got too many toolboxes um, it's shameful actually the amount of toolboxes I've got I've got one two uh, three four five toolboxes in my studio but it's the best storage um, and then I thought to myself and then again I, um, I've, I was looking at my husband's uh, storage place in his shed and he's got all of this fantastic shelving and it's quite strong and very industrial so I thought perfect perfect so I store all of my art supplies um, in my toolboxes and the shelving and in particular the shelving uh, what's really good about that is that you can rearrange your um, the shelves and so I've got a top shelf up there where I just place um, you know all my large sheets of paper all nice and flat all nice and clean so that's pretty much how I store my art supplies and I do have the odd um, pastel drawers uh, for my color pencils and stuff like that but that's basically what I do have you know and apart um, pretty much it and of course well my pa oh sorry and my pastel um, and my pastel pieces when they're not framed I've actually made a makeshift um, little drawer um, out of uh, foam uh, foam boards which are quite perfect but that's all the storage that I have in my little art space. 
The camera setup that I had when I first started was I had an old DSLR Canon camera, top little camera, good quality of course. Uh, I had uh, my tripod and that's pretty much it actually as far as the camera equipment um, and of course it takes photographs beautifully and it also had this little um, uh, the recording function the recording function only had 12 minutes and 33 seconds 33 seconds um, which is probably a little bit difficult when you've got you know when you're doing your artwork and you've got this flow going well of course this would stop and so I you know well that's what I did uh, I had a little timer and I used to stop after 12 minutes and um, of course because it turns itself off and then I just start recording so I did that quite I did that for quite for quite a long time and I also had a, um, a little uh, lav mic uh, which I used uh, like what I've got on now the exact same one I use that for my recordings if I wanted to do any voiceovers and stuff like that so which is oh, this lav mic was probably about 20 30 dollars something like that of course it's made by Rode and um, and that's what I started with well now I've decided well this 12 minutes isn't really cutting it for me so this is like down the track and I was thinking and I was looking at my phone my mobile phone and I went hang on a minute this has got a video camera so I used that and it was perfect it was perfect so uh, I was using um, and of course I would record now say for 20 minutes at a time 25 minutes at a time perfect so that was my camera equipment now when we're talking about lighting and sound the lighting that I first started off with were these two side lamps that I had and um, well of course you know the lighting wasn't that fantastic but the bulbs were uh, the the natural light uh, the, the white light so I was using that and that worked out pretty good for a little bit and the camera equipment that I use now are um, I use now a video cam now this video cam is a Panasonic now for this one is actually fantastic because what I do now is I just press record and I just I just forget it's there and of course I record as much as I can until my SD card um, is full and then I just uh, download that onto my computer so that camera is absolutely fantastic it's not the ex it's not expensive and it's not real cheap so I actually got the middle range now I would give you a figure as to how much I paid but in each country it's all a little bit different but uh, and so that's what I use now I use now a video cam by Panasonic perfect for what I need and of course it's got all the functions that I could possibly want um, put it on a tripod over my desk um, which is uh, most of the time how I work um, and it's sort of like filming above or sometimes I'll have a camera which is on my side um, perfect for that and um, and of course I've purchased um, also uh, some uh, different types of um, uh, tripods uh, that could sit on my desk so you know I've actually upgraded since my early days but when you're first starting out to video your work or film your work you don't need that much um, and it doesn't have to cost that much either uh, in fact um, there's a lot of my videos that were taken um, on my YouTube channel that you'll see that have got um, that have been filmed with my um, uh, with my uh, Canon uh, DSLR and my um, and my and my mobile phone perfect lovely work and it was just crystal clear too especially when I got onto a mobile phone so if you're thinking to set up if you're think, thinking of setting up um, uh, like a, a camera equipment, you don't need to go much further than your than your camera, than your uh, sorry your your mobile phone. The music that I use, actually, I use a handful of I use a handful of music, um, and it's all royalty free. Uh, some are free, 
like as in you don't have to pay and some are that you have to pay a subscription for which are royalty free. The ones that I pay a subscription for are audio blocks or story blocks which they're now known as. Um, I recommend Epic Demic Sound. They are fantastic. I pay $15, 15 Australian dollars um, a month and my mind is at peace and I don't have to worry about any um, copyright strikes from YouTube because if you weren't using royalty free uh, music uh, you would be getting quite a few uh, copyright strikes um, against your videos and you wouldn't want that to happen. Uh, you could also go to Creative Commons um, which um, they have a fantastic library so long as you are attributing the artist um, in your description box um, that is a perfect way to get your um, uh, music um, from there and I've also used um, YouTube also have a music library free that is free totally free so there's quite a few places where you can actually get your um, your music from sound effects or, um, or music that would easily go with the pieces that you uh, put together. In the beginning, uh, when I was uh, videoing or filming my work, the video editing software I used was Movie Maker by Microsoft. Back then it was free, but now it's, more su now it's subscription based or you've got to register. But it was, and it is, it, it is such a simple, um, video editing software for people who are just beginning it is perfect um, so uh, definitely I, I was using that for a very long time and then once I'd actually mastered um, that software I decided that I wanted a few more features um, so I ended up um, researching and I found Camtasia which uh, that is a one-off payment and but I tell you what it was a, a really good progression from the Movie Maker to Camtasia. I just wanted those extra extra features and I've been videoing and filming and using that software for quite a few years and I do recommend uh, that one uh, for people who um, who just want that little bit extra. Now look there is there are so many um, uh, so, so many video editing softwares software out there uh, but this is what I was using at the time so I used Movie Maker to begin with then I went to Camtasia and now I've recently um, got uh, I'm, I'm getting into um, Adobe Premiere Pro uh, which is a subscription base um, and of course I've wanted now to do a little bit I wanted to be a little bit more adventurous and do um, just a little bit more uh, which is um, it, it is a bit of a learning curve curve for me but um, the, this is what I've used in the past and this is what I'm using now um, the lighting the lighting that I'm using now are soft boxes now you can purchase this from eBay uh, that's where I purchase mine I have lights well as far as lights are concerned uh, when my husband was setting up my art studio he researched and found that um, 5,500 lumens was the perfect lighting uh, for artists so I've got two up in the ceiling one hanging over my workspace I have a few other light boxes I've got one on each side of me when I'm working and of course I've got a light box over my um, a ring light over my work so that's the lights that I use and for me the lighting is really important um, as far as when I'm working to getting the true colors and of course when I'm actually filming as well um, I wanted to make sure that I'm getting the close the closest possible uh, true colors in my work showcasing that is yeah so and that's and then they're not ex actually that expensive really so if you you know there are some really fantastic deals I know that you can purchase these from Amazon and I know that you can purchase them from eBay because that's where I got mine from um, 
very good investment, good lighting, and of course, good sound. When I say good sound, um, of course, the lav mic, which I've mentioned before, but I've upgraded a little bit and I've gone into a podcast mic. Um, not very expensive, not very cheap. I actually just got the mid-range again by road and sometimes like I then I don't have to worry about wearing a lav mic um, which is not a problem anyway but yeah so that's that's what you have to consider is um, when you're uh, filming that your lighting is good, that your sound is good and that's pretty much it really. The reason why I started a YouTube channel was for a few things to begin with. At the time, I wanted to uh, create like a, 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 a video library of my work, um, showing you how, I, how something starts and how it finishes. But it was more like a diary, like a video diary of the work that I've been um, um, that I've been doing, and it's actually progressed. A little bit more on from that but that was one of the main reasons and another and the other reason was I wanted to somehow showcase my work of course you know you could upload to the other media sites like Facebook and Instagram but I was filming or wanting to film my work so I thought YouTube was a perfect um, a perfect space for me to do that and um, I was very nervous if you have a look at some of my earlier videos, I actually cringe at some of them, but I've left them there because it it shows how my progression. Uh, I've always been nervous in front of a camera, still am, um, even nervous doing this, I've got to say, uh, nervous with uh, live streams sometimes. Um, it's not until I, you know, start talking and carrying on that's when I relax and of course I don't you know and of course we all don't like the way we sound don't like the look um, but they're all the things um, but in a nutshell it's just being able to look back and say oh wow you know wow I remember when I did that or I remember when I did this so it's more like a diary if anything yeah the equipment that I use for live streaming varies to the regular filming that I do. For example, the live streaming, the extra equipment that I use is a green screen. You can purchase a green screen from eBay, uh, there's Amazon, and it all depends what kind of green screen you want. Now, this is a green screen, it could be a blue screen. Um, and that's all uh, tie, tied in with your the software that you use called OBS. Now before I go into OBS, the equipment that I use again for live streaming is the green screen, I use my regular video camera, I use a, my Logitech webcam, my, uh, my microphone and all of that, except for my green screen of course, but all of that is tied in with OBS and that is a software which is free which you can download and that's what I use for live streaming. As opposed to my regular filming, I just use my regular video cam and that's pretty much it really. Uh, and my lights of course. Um, motivation, getting motivated um, is not an issue for me at the moment. Um, in fact, I'm actually quite driven, but I have had my lapses. There, it, you know, it, it does come in peaks and troughs. Um, but how I get motivated sometimes is if I'm feeling if I'm not feeling it, um, I usually go in and have a look at the images that I've downloaded, my royalty free images. I usually have a look on the internet, see what's trending and which what isn't. Um, I have a look at videos of other artists and get inspired and think of my own ideas. So that's pretty much how I get motivated. The reference material that I use for my art projects, um, it varies. Uh, it's, I've, uh, perhaps maybe it's photos that I've taken. It's, there are royalty free sites that uh, I have I've subscribed to. Uh, for example, uh, deposit photos, that is subscription based. You can go into Creative Commons. You could go into places like Storyblocks, uh, Pixabay. Um, 
uh, Paint My Photo. Paint My Photo is free. Um, Pixabay is free. So there are a lot of free sites that I use, but there are some subscription bases that I, uh, based sites that I use, but royalty free, of course. So in a nutshell, um, this is pretty much the behind the scenes uh, of what's going on when I'm filming or when I'm not filming or setting up. Uh, I hope this has been a little bit helpful um, and plus given you an insight as to how I feel and what I'm like. Um, I'm always wanting to engage and to uh, connect with like-minded people such as yourselves. But I just wanted to give you an example of uh, some of the things that are in my studio that I usually um, work with. But until the next time, oh, oh <laughs> sorry. Um, and if you, uh, if there are any questions about of any of the equipment or anything that I've said, uh, please uh, leave your questions in the description box below. Um, if you've liked this video, please give it a like, uh, perhaps maybe share. Um, but until the next time, uh, bye for now.